Hey, it's Matt with Meat Church. Tonight, we're going to be doing a barbecue and bourbon pairing. Well, I always say there's no better pairing in the world than barbecue and bourbon. And I know a ton of our audience are bourbon lovers, and so I'm really, really, really excited about tonight. My friend Ryan Cecil has come down from Kentucky. He's a bourbon expert. We're gonna get into all of that, and we're gonna pair a bunch of meats with bourbon today. We're also gonna make a couple cocktails for you guys, and this man is a big time expert. Uh, this just isn't a, a bourbon lover, you know, from down the road. This guy grew up in the business. It's in his blood. He'll tell you about that. But he's the co-host of the number one most downloaded bourbon podcast in the world, Bourbon Pursuit. 2.2 million downloads last year. Um, he's also um, the master blender at Pursuit Spirits. So we've got some of his bourbon here. But he's going to come in and talk all types of bourbon. We're going to pair this stuff with brisket, ribs, pork, sausage. He's put a ton of time and research into this. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And uh, by bourbon expert, that just means I've drank a lot of bourbon in my life. You know, <laughs> being in Kentucky, you kind of grow up, you know, coming out of the womb, uh, you know, to when you're when you're whiny and fussy, your parents just give you bourbon to shut up and, you know, you know, make your gums feel better. So uh, I love it. So you're from Bardstown. Correct. Yep. So tell, so give us a little background. Tell tell everybody in the Meat Church congregation a little bit about your background uh, before we jump into all this. Sure. Yeah. So. Bardstown, Kentucky, uh, bourbon capital of the world. So, you know, home to like Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, Maker's Mark's really close there, Four Roses, uh, Willet. Uh, so some of the big hitters of the, the, the bourbon world. And so just grew up around it my whole life. Uh, you know, really didn't think any of it. My grandfather was a maintenance man for Four Roses. Four Roses had a distillery in Lawrenceburg and bottling and uh, Cox's Creek there. And he would travel and repair all the distillery equipment and whatnot. And so, just kind of grew up around it like Jim Rutledge who was a famous master of Stiller Four Roses he was friends with my grandfather Jim Rutledge is one of the fantastic blenders of the you know the modern bourbon era um, and so I just kind of grew up around it my dad kept you know with the legacy of my grandfather working on machine he was a machinist uh, doing tool and die repair for different distilleries and you know their manufacturing equipment so I would help deliver parts and do this and that and he would have cases of bourbon sitting around that they would gave him and you know, my dumb ass would, you know, go steal like 19 year old Elijah Craig's or, you know, these really rare bottles and take them to like high school or college parties and mix them with Coke, you know, like, <laughs> like those are like bourbon regrets that I have, like, you know, to this day. So, you know, just awesome. been infatuated around my whole life and no one gave a shit about it, my, you know, for 90% of my life. And it's only been in the last 10 years that people kind of latched on to this hobby and uh, it's so important to our community and our state. It's like one of the one, few things that we produce and export. And it's just one of those products that brings people together. It's really humbling and exciting to see bourbon. I can't believe I'm sitting here with Matt Pittman from Meat Church. I, he's helped me win like neighborhood bourbon barbecue competitions. And now I'm sitting here talking about bourbon. It just like blows my mind because, you know, like I said, no one cared about this stuff growing up. So I'm, I'm super pumped to be here and help preach the gospel. I love it. Well, you know, ironically, we're on Meat Church Gospel, yeah. but uh, the gospel of bourbon, so. You're gonna be on the payroll soon. You start this podcast, as you say, in your basement, I think six years ago. Correct. And yep. it has blown up into this monster. And then that led you into blending your own bourbon, which is, it's all, I mean, in Texas, like it's at the liquor stores that I shop at. It's fantastic. We'll talk about that, but tell us how that happened. Yeah, so it's wild. Uh, you know, kind of like you, you got into bourbon, or sorry, to barbecue, and you couldn't just let it go. You had to like turn yeah. it into a damn YouTube channel and, you know, all this stuff. Same with me with bourbon. I was infatuated with it. I grew up around it. Um, so. I saw this kind of trend with people getting excited about it, especially like younger demographic and podcast and YouTube is kind of where people go for media and niche content. And so I thought, well, there's not really a bourbon podcast on there. And my partner, Kenny was in technology. I partnered with him. We were literally were in our basement with a shitty MacBook and a crappy USB microphone. And it was the worst audio ever. Like, like you can go back to our earlier episodes, you know, just to see like how far we've come, but it's like really bad, but we yeah. came a long way. But uh, yeah, we had some of the brightest minds in the industry, you know, the, the Jim Beams of the world, the Buffalo Traces, uh, Heaven Hills, all master distillers, master blenders, ambassadors, quality control people. We really wanted to give people an education to like, 
if I want to know more about this brand, you know, what's behind it? Like, who are the people behind it? What's the recipe? How, are, how long are they aging it? What toast and char levels are they using in the barrel? And so bourbon is this like unique product that um, just has all these like components and layers of stuff that makes it happen. And so we brought that to our audience and we took all that knowledge and we're like, hey, we've learned from the brightest minds. Why don't we uh, try to start our own brand? So that's what we did. We went out on our own and started looking for some of the unique, greatest distillate out there. Um, because we can't out distill the legacy distilleries. Right. They make some of the best bourbon. They've been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years and they have the experience, they have the, the casts that have been aging. And so I was looking at the market and I thought, well, how exciting would it be to blend different mash bills of different bourbon, different rye whiskeys together um, and unite them into a blend? Because blending, we can kind of create layers and layers of profiles of flavor. I'm sure you do that with barbecue. It's yeah. like with your rubs and stuff, you're just, trying to look for what can I add to this pork or this brisket to like really develop it, to give it this flavor that helps, uh, you know, elevate it. And that's what I'd sought out to do with our, our project here. That's awesome. And I'm not going to give any secrets, but I know you have barrels that you like from amazing places. Oh, there's no secrets. I'm wide open. So we can tell. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like you are like me. I told my wife, I said that you were, you know, this like, obviously this bourbon nerd, whereas I'm a barbecue nerd and you already said it, I set out to learn everything possible about outdoor cooking. You've done the same thing. So that's one of the reasons I'm super excited. Um, and what's cool today is, you know, you could just be pairing your bourbon that goes so well with barbecue with everything, but you're not. We're actually going to do, we're, we're going to be pairing today with brands that I consider approachable, things that people can find on the shelves. You have amazing bourbon, but we're not putting out what I call like baller bottles that nobody can find. Like people are going to be able to go get this stuff. Yeah, the bourbon's one of those fascinating things. There's so many different styles of bourbon. And so today, when you kind of approached me with this idea, I was like, so I really was like, I don't care who's on the label. I want what tastes the best yeah. with this particular Perfect. meat. And so, uh, you know, bourbon has so many different mash bills, different char levels, like we talked about, and different, uh, you know, master distillers, different people tasting. So there's all these wide array of flavors. And two, I wanted to just give you people something they can have access to because there's some great bourbons that you just can't find. And it's like, you're gonna beat your head. You know, if I came out here and said, Oh, Pappy 20 is like amazing with brisket. Everybody like, well, you Can't know, I'm sure it is, but I'll never get to try that. Yeah. So there's so many more good, and Pappy 20 is amazing whiskey, but there's so many good bourbons out there. So I'm hoping to help educate people on the different styles. That. And I'll even say like, yes, we're drinking this, but look for these two. They're in that similar flavor profile that awesome. you can it's find. It's going to be really shelf. good information for people. Yeah. But first, you're going to make a couple cocktails for us, so a couple yeah. recipes for, for the audience, which I'm very excited about. So yes. we're ready to jump into those. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, we're first going to start off with, let's see here, get you a glass. Got some glasses, get some ice. So what are we going to make at first? first one? All right. So I want to throw people for a wild card. We'll probably lean into an old fashioned, but most time bourbon cocktails are very like you know, rich, very sweet, very like, you know, cold weather cocktails. And since we're in Texas, it's a cold night tonight, but most of the time it's hot. And yeah. so I wanted to show off how versatile bourbon is as a spirit because it is like one of those spirits that has a ton of flavor. And I wanted to highlight it in a cocktail that you could have in the summertime or the spring. Because most of the time when it's hot, people will automatically think, oh, I want vodka or I want gin or tequila. But I wanted to show how versatile it is. So t today we're going to start out with a bourbon mojito. Well, um, this Most, is bourbon drinking weather right now. Well, it way. is bourbon drinking we weather, fair enough. So we're going to do a bourbon mojito, and, you know, selfishly, I'll use our, our bourbon here. Um, but uh, you can use any bourbon. Um, probably with a mojito, I would do a high rye bourbon. So, um, so something like Russell's Reserve, uh, Elijah Craig, um, Knob Creek. Because with mojitos and bourbon cocktails, they're, they're sweet already. So a high rye bourbon is going to give a little more spice, a little more robustness to it. That just doesn't like sweet on sweet on sweet. Um, right. So I, when I blend whiskeys or I'm creating cocktails, I want to build layers of flavor. I want your palate to go through a journey. Um, so that's kind of how I approach things. So awesome. really quickly, so we got our, you know, your excellent staff here, Don, cut me some lime wedges. So, well, and I dropped the, the jigger, but let me get that. He's coming. Go. He's coming. We here comes the excellent assistant. Sorry, right, so I'll, I'll just squeeze this lime just a little bit. Two, two lime wedges here for this. 
two for me. Drop them in. And then, you know, the cool thing about cocktails is you can do them however you want. I just like a subtle, subtle mint. I don't like an overpowering mint. So yeah. I just put like, you know, I'll take one sprig and just kind of take the leaves off, throw them at the bottom here, and then I'll do it for me. Smells good already. Oh, I know. All right, and then we'll take our bourbon. So I do two ounces of bourbon. We're using ours, our Pursuit United bourbon blend. Um, it's a blend of two rye bourbons and a weeded bourbon. So it's got a lot of layers of flavor in there, but we'll do two ounces of that. It's really good. We're just drinking it right here also. Everybody doesn't know that um, we had a little tasting last night and yeah. allegedly we were overserved. Uh, we got after it yeah. slightly. I might have. I don't know if this is considered a little hair of the dog uh, in the evening, but. Um. Well, we're fighting fire with fire, right? <laughs> so also too, we're gonna do a little ginger syrup. So I do a half ounce of ginger syrup. It just gives it a little, nice little like, you know, kind of freshness, bright, brightness to it. Which we picked this up at Specs, by the way. Big fan of Specs. Yesterday was my first time in one and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, it's like the defense. Costco, but like <laughs> just liquor everywhere. So. That was really that was a really cool experience. So, all right, I'm gonna take my muddler. And I'm just gonna muddle it all together. Just kind of get those oils off the, you know, the lime. Get that mint grinded in there. Get it all mixed together. So do that. All right. And then I'm gonna put some ice in there. I'm not really used to this. I'm not Rachel Ray or anybody. So yeah, it's all good. It's reality TV right That's here. That's right. I have the best job ever. I get to make and eat barbecue and drink a little bourbon. So it's not a bad life. I'm getting, this is like a paid gig right now. Things could be worse. Yeah. Well. All right, then we're gonna top with some club soda. Hope it doesn't explode on me. That would've made for good TV if it did. That's right. My friends would love me in the background. <laughs> Pop it off there. Look how pretty that is. All right, then we're gonna take our fancy dancy bar spoon, give it a good swirl, get it all mixed together. Oh yeah. See, that looks and good. And then these you're gonna want straws, cause like otherwise, I've drank these without straws and then I got green covering my teeth, all the mint, and I look like a fool, so. Uh, we went looking for these fancy sugar yeah, cane straws. Yeah, I was looking for these sugar cane them. straws. And I have to give a shout out to Ceviche. It's a Latin restaurant in Louisville. They make a great bourbon mojito. They gave me this idea, but they don't add the ginger syrup. I added ginger syrup in mine. I just thought it gave it this nice little pop of flavor. So cheers, brother. Cheers. Yep. Oh, wow. That's dangerous. It's dangerously That's delicious. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is something you're on That's your boat or you're just hanging out, it's a nice summer drink. Like I said, a lot of people associate bourbon with cold weather drinking. This is a cocktail you can have, you know, on your boat when oh, it's yeah. hot, um, You could drink, this is bourbon in warm weather, no problem. Yeah, I must, man, I could sip on this all night. This I think is, I will. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna jump into yeah, so super we're, popular. Yeah, the traditional included. old fashioned. And old fashioned's like, you know, one of those cocktails, uh, it's fun because you kind of have a few ingredients, but you can make it, the cool thing about it is you can make it your own by doing a few different things. So, you know, typically an old fashioned is, you know, your bourbon or rye, some syrup, uh, some bitters, and a little bit of citrus. The way I approach it is like, I like rye whiskey in my old fashioned, because once again, we talked about sweet on sweet. Bourbon is 51% corn. And corn brings a lot of sweetness to the spirit. Well, rye is 51% rye, and rye is more of a like spicier, kind of robust spirit. So it really stands up to the sweetness that you get with the syrup of an old fashioned. So I'm gonna start with just, you know, just a glass beaker here. And I'm gonna do my best to make I'm two. Keep enjoying this. Yeah, you should. We will put the recipes for these cocktails down in the description and also on meatchurch.com as always. All right, so I do two, so when I make these individually, I do two ounces of rye 
per cocktail. Obviously, there's two of us, so two times four. two, four. No so complaints. I'll do four ounces of rye whiskey here. And I want to just say shout out to our rye whiskey, to Sagamore Spirits. Um, they're fantastic partners of ours. They contract, they make our rye whiskey and Barstown Bourbon Company. They make our rye whiskey. Uh, it's one of my favorite products for cocktails. It it's really just adds this nice uh, rich and spice and uh, fruitiness to cocktails that you don't get out of a lot of spirits. We had some great Sagamore last night. Yep, we did. And so we'll do, what I do for my simple syrup is a maple syrup. So I'll do one to one maple syrup with water. Just cook it down. We did on the Traeger back here just to give it a little extra, or not your Traeger, your offset, um, just to give it a little hint of smoke little flavor. Smoke, yeah. um, but you don't have to do the smoke. And you can make simple syrups with honey, with maple, with just demerara sugar, regular sugar. You can kind of, That's the fun thing. You can kind of play with it and give it the different flavors that you're looking for. I like the maple syrup in an old fashioned, so I'm excited for this. Shout so. out to my man, Rut Daniels in Canada, AKA Bud Fisher, who introduced <laughs> me to maple in an old fashioned. So I'm about to send this to him. So if I'm making one old fashioned, I'll put about a half ounce um, per cocktail in there. Since we're doing two, obviously I'm doing about an ounce. And that's something you can play with. If you like it less sweet, you can do less. If you like it more sweet, you can add more. So. Okay. We're gonna do that right there. I might add just a slight bit more because that was only three quarters ounce. All right. And then a lot, you know, a lot of people use Angostura. Their tried and true bitters are so good. Um, you can't go wrong just doing Angostura. So I do, typically if I'm doing one cocktail, I'll do two dashes. So we'll do four in this one. And then the game changer for me was black walnut bitters when I found these. It just kind of gives it this like, nice richness and depth that you don't get with just a standard, standard old fashion. This was new to me when you asked me to pick that up. Yeah, you're, a lot of people are like, what, black walnut bitters? Yeah. But your man Don was able to pick them out, you know, last night, so. Yeah, and uh, Amazon, uh, Specs, Total Wine, it was easy to find. Yep. So, all right, you got that, so we just, you know, give it a good swirl. Just get nice and chilled. The ice in here is gonna dilute it down slightly. The good thing about, you know, typically if you're making cocktails, I like a 100 proof spirit or more. Ours is at 108 because if it's less than 100 proof, once you start adding sugar and water, that spirit's gonna kind of fall apart. So you okay. want something that's gonna stand up to that, that sugar and the, the ice. And so give it a good twirl. We got our two glasses with the, you know, the cube. I'm typically, you know, I'm a redneck from Bardstown, so usually I use frizzite, fridge ice, but you were gracious enough to make hey cubes man, I had to go with cubes. They're not super clear, but they are cubes. So I'll use our fancy, you know, strainer here, whatnot, and then just pour it over. Oh yeah. This was my entry to bourbon, was this dangerous cocktail right here. Yeah. That, and. Honestly, I think the old fashioned resurrected bourbon because you had like Don Draper, you know, and Mad Men, all that, and then people getting them at restaurants and stuff. And I think it really highlighted the spirit again, you know, because it was really popular pre prohibition and then from pro post prohibition to like the 60s, then clear spirits came back. So I think bartenders, you know, really saw original cocktails were made with rye or bourbon and started resurrecting those old recipes. And so that's really what I think has helped save the bourbon industry. And then a lot of people use oranges, and I, I don't know. For me, I like lemon as my garnish. Um, so we'll do a little lemon peel. And any citrus will work. Well, not any. You want to do lime or probably orange. So I'll just take a piece of lemon peel. And then just kind of give it a little around the rim. This is a must have, Luxardo's. If somebody sends you an old fashioned with a maraschino, just say, come on, let's be real. This is this is the best cherry for an old fashioned. I had one a couple weeks ago that you really would have been pissed at. It had maraschino and, and, and the muddled fruit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big no no in the Cecil House. So get yeah. that garnish, a little juju in there oh, yeah. from, the, from the brandy. All right, well, cheers. Cheers again. Yep. Yeah, that's I like a, the lemon. Yeah, the lemon. I've see, never had that. Yeah, I like the lemon. Just it gives a little brighter. Orange is just I don't know. I I think lemon gives that bright 
fruit zest. Orange is a little more darker, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I just think it adds that, I like, like that. elevated flavor. Because um, like I said, when I'm building cocktails or my blended whiskeys here, I'm really just building layers of flavor over your palate. So you're not just getting, it's not very one dimensional. Yeah. So. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. All right. We're going to jump into the pairing. So I got to go grab some barbecue. Keep enjoying that old fashioned. I'll be right back. First up, I've made you my pulled pork, one of the most popular recipes on meatchurch.com. My southern upbringing, super popular. What you got? As soon as you told me pulled pork, I immediately thought, okay, sweet and savory. And immediately my mind went to Elijah Craig. So Elijah Craig is a, the mash bill is a 78, 10, 12 brat recipe. So 78% corn. So it's a lot of sweetness. So I get a lot of like coffee, toffee, like Heath bar notes and that. And I think it really balances out with the pork. What do you think? You want to try it? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I mean, I would say is a pig's ass pork. Yeah. <laughs> a pig's ass pork, yep. Cheers. <laughs> man, this looks good. The barbecue good. man goes bourbon first. <laughs> and the, the bourbon man goes barbecue first. Damn, they're so good. Oh man. I can get down with that. Yeah, the sweetness of this 78, 10, 12, mash bill from Elijah Craig, one of my favorites. Just really balances, or doesn't even balance, it complements the pork here. It's just sweet yeah, nothing, on sweet. Nothing competing. Yeah, they're not They're not fighting each other, yeah. so I think this is a perfect pairing, so. Yeah, Elijah Craig, I, it's one that you can find on the shelf all the time, usually sub $40. I think it, it's a home run with pulled pork. I mean, you want to give us some others or other thoughts? I know you've got some to go with it. or if, if, I mean, this is, like you said, you can find this, but any other ideas? Yeah, so probably Knob Creek would work well with this as well because it's a higher corn recipe. Also, okay. higher corn. Knob Creek, to me, also has that, like, cornbread note, um, like which is, like, sweet, sugary, and, like, kind of, you know, that baked flavor. I think anything sweet is going to go really good with pulled pork. Okay. Well, let's eat some more, and I'll go get the second meat. Yeah. Dude, this pulled pork's insane. Next up, I've got sausage for you. So this is its not a real spicy sausage. It's a pork and beef, so pretty tame Texas sausage, basically. Yeah, anytime you're pairing bourbon with food, you really want to stay away from, like, too spicy because, you know, I mean, as smooth as sometimes bourbons are, you really don't want it. It still has some spiciness to it, so you don't really want them fighting each other. You yeah. want to, like, complement or, or balance them. So okay. uh, I'm glad you made a mild sausage. And when I was doing that, I was tasting through several different things, and what I had in my mind just didn't work, but when I came into a weeded bourbon, it just like nailed it for me. So okay. weeded bourbon, this is Barstown Bourbon Company, their origin series. Uh, this is a six year weeded bourbon. It's a 68% corn, 20% wheat, 12% barley. Um, weeded bourbons have this nice creaminess to them. They also have like a little hint of cherry. Um, you know, Weller is a popular weeded bourbon. Makers is a popular weeded bourbon. So you could use those. Uh, Makers is pretty well, you know, pretty easy to find. The Barstown bourbon's pretty easy to find. Um, Weller, obviously, where you're at, it's gonna be tough, but uh, yeah. this is an excellent bourbon. This is six years, and I think it does great with the sausage. Price point? This is 40, it depends on the market, but it's around between 45 and 50 bucks. Okay. So it's you know very reasonably priced. Uh, it's, to me, one of these, th this stuff is crushable. Weeded bourbons are like soft, and delicate, you know, you can just like sit, you can go through them easily, so. Yeah, I like a weeded bourbon. They're dangerously delicious, so, uh, cheers. Cheers. All right. I'm gonna it's go. funny how last time I, I know. went bourbon, you yeah, went barbecue. I know, I, I, I'm gonna I, try I went to for the meat, because I get bourbon all day, you know, you get meat all day, so yeah. Mm. Good sausage. That's good sausage. Mm. Okay. I like I'm gonna go pairing. for another one. <laughs> you, I like you, that pairing better than the pork. Like, yeah. That's like easy. Mm -hmm. There'll be things that I eat in life, like you know, people do like pizza and beer, and I can't do it. Like this is so complimentary. Like I dig this. Yeah. So anytime you're pairing something, obviously you're either going for like balancing each other out. So like, you know, like wine and steak or acid and fat balancing each other out. Um, this I think they just kind of build off each other. They complement each other. That creaminess, the soft texture of the weeded bourbon with the rich fatness um, and you know mild flavor of this, I think they just go hand in hand. It's it's such a good pairing. You nailed this one. All right. Mm. We'll need That's some good. more and then we'll be on to the third. All right. 
All right, that sausage and that pairing was delicious, so now we're into ribs. These are also a little bit sweet. Uh, not too sweet, but definitely a sweeter flavor profile. Yeah, so Mealy would tell me what you do with your ribs. I was like, I'm gonna be a little selfish here, but I, I just couldn't help myself because it was such a good pairing. So we use our flagship bourbon, which is Pursuit United. And so what's different about our product versus a lot of bourbons on the market, most bourbons are one mash bill, you know, aged in different warehouses and branded 50 different ways. Ours is a blend of three different bourbon mash bills. So we have two rye bourbon mash bills and one weeder mash bill. And so, and then we prove it down to 108. Um, so like when I blend stuff, I want to take your palate on a journey. We've talked about that, you know, with the cocktails and you know how I blended these, but basically I want you to have sweet fruit and spice as you're drinking this. So I thought this per paired perfectly well with this, this rib, um, you know, your seasoning and the glaze that you put on these. Yeah. So you want to get after it? Let's do it. Oh man, these ribs look, I'm a Memphis style rib, you know, dry rub. I'm usually not like a glaze, so I'm, I'll be interested to see what it these- It just cracks uh, me up because you're all into the barbecue and I just keep staring at the uh, brown water. I know, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I got bourbon all day, every day. And it's like, these ribs just look freaking incredible. Oh, yeah. I cut them up for you, make it easy. Oh man, look at that. Nailed it. Oh man. I don't even know if it needs to be paired with bourbon. Oh, it's it so does. good on it. It does need to be paired. Yeah. Another easy one, which is like a, yeah. a win. Yeah, so a lot of people see it 108, they think it drinks a lot lighter <clears throat> than 108. You know, for this pairing with our this bourbon, you get like a lot of brown sugar, some uh, uh, like cornbread notes on the front, but that mid palate is going to bring that fruit, some of some like orange and like lemon uh, brightness, and then that uh, nice spiciness from that Love high rye mash bill brings out that that nice lingering finish. And I think it just goes hand in hand with this this rub and this uh, glaze that you put on here. I love it, and I think I mentioned. I'm not sure. I, I see this on my shelves, uh, both right here, right here. I, you can't buy liquor in Waxhatchee, but just <laughs> up the highway, and then out at our lake house at Cedar Creek. At a, I, got, I shop at a place called Hoot and Holler. Oh um, yeah, they, dollar, yes. Yeah, They're they, big supporters are. Yeah, they carry it. So Yeah. So we're in Texas. Uh we love Texas. Hell. I think you know, I got good friends here. I've spent you know, I think I've been to Texas like five times in the past like eighteen months. So I it, if I can't be in Kentucky, I'd like to be I love being in Texas. We so. love having you here. We're gonna keep bringing you back if you keep doing this. I'm gonna go get the big boy Texas style brisket. Ooh, can't I'll wait. I'll be back. Save the best for last, Texas brisket. Uh, you told me that you like fatty brisket, so this is the point. I've made just a couple small slices off of it. But you stepped in on a video we were shooting last night making this brisket. Uh, it was a brisket we did on the brand new Traeger Ironwood XL, and uh, I kind of teased that this was coming. And you said, oh, you're using holy cow, and you wanted to take the holy cow home to analyze what we would pair with this. What's the verdict? Yeah, so it's weird to analyze a rub, but I did. And, uh, you know, once I smelled it, kind of put out, tasted it, you know, obviously with brisket, like we talked about, it's really fatty, and you talked about the pepper base. But two, I thought, so with those flavor compounds and what I got in the holy cow, we need something with a lot of boldness, but we also need some oak in there. So this Russell's Tenure is a great single barrel pick that we did through my podcast. We do a ton of single barrel picks, but Russell's is one of my favorite. It's a 10 year bourbon, um, but it has this, it's a raw bourbon, but it has a lot of great oak influences to it. So that oak's gonna bring out that, some of those dried fruits, but it's also gonna bring some of that caramel, vanilla, and just that sweet oak that you get that's really gonna balance out this brisket, or at least I hope. That's yeah. what I thought. After and sniffing your rub, that's what I thought would happen. So we'll see. It's not <laughs> weird to analyze a rub. I'm good with it. Yeah, it is kind of weird. And you know, that's we cooked, what I do. I'm weird. You asked me what we cooked with too, and I told you post oak. So I know. And then he told me all about post oak. So now I know. It's, Here we are. Yep. All, all right. right. Let's dive in. Price point. Oh, I mean, for a single barrel pick, they're probably 55, 65. You don't have to get a single barrel pick of this. They have it. The ten-year standard's probably like more like forty-five dollars, thirty-five, somewhere depending on the state you're in but pretty readily available. This to me is a home run of everything classic Kentucky bourbon. So uh, really good, really good. enjoyable. So hope you like it. I've liked it all so far. Yeah, it's not I'll, bad, I'll is it? I'll let you go first on the brisket. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take this one. This one looks extra fatty. I'm a, I'm a fat boy, so I'm gonna take it. <laughs> 
Oh, man. It's okay. Yeah, we don't get this in Louisville. I mean. No, I wouldn't make any mm, money. We got, no, uh, Cecil's out on the mutton. Uh, <laughs> but this, gosh, I can get, I can get, I can get, I can get down with this, so. Man, I think you uh, nailed them all. I mean, I mean, that it, what is your saying? I ain't mad at it. I mean, that, I ain't mad at that, so that's pretty good. I love it. I didn't even have to say it. I know. I ain't Gosh, mad at I'm, it. Well, you keep talking. I'm going to eat this. Man, mm. that's really good. Um, we have this pick through the Dallas Bourbon Club, too, so I'd had it, a fan of it. Yeah, it's probably not as good because I didn't pick that one, but yeah, no, I'm mean, kidding. Yeah, you're right. I'm kidding. Well, man, this has been a lot of fun. Oh, dude, it's a blast. I Such mean, a, a change of pace from our cooking videos. I, people that know me know that I love collaborating with my friends and other people. And for me, like I said in the beginning, to, to find someone who's nerded out as much in their industry as, mu as much as I do in mine is, is awesome. I know. We've been hanging out the past couple of days. I appreciate the hospitality. It's been great. But it, it's like I feel like we're the same people. We're just interested in two different things. Yeah. But weirdly enough, they come together. So this has been an awesome time. And I'm super excited to, to show off our Kentucky bourbon and uh, our our products, and it pairs so well with your, your barbecue. You do a fantastic job. And Thank you. I know. I was a fanboy even coming to this. So this is like, I can't even, I'm trying to wrap my head around this, and I'm trying to keep it together because I don't You're even know how job. this happened. So, Well, I, I'm excited. I'm coming to see you in June. Heck yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing a bourbon trail trip with a, a bunch of my buddies, and so super stoked for that. But why don't you tell everybody how they can find you first off? Yeah, so with the podcast, it's Bourbon Pursuit. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, anywhere and everywhere you can find uh, uh, podcasts. Uh, we have YouTube as well. Uh, for our brand, PursuitSpirits.com is where you're going to find uh, our whiskeys. We're obviously in Texas. We love Texas. Uh, you know, we're in Specs, Goody Goody, Liquor Kings, all those. Uh, so look at your local liquor stores. We're in 10 states. Uh, I was going to try to spout them off, but with my ADD mind, I really fumbled through them all together. So uh, look, right. you can go on our website and do, we have a location finder where you can find our, our brands in your area. And we'd love the support. We appreciate it. We're just trying to bring really quality whiskeys. Um, like I said, building those layers of flavor, something you can put on your bar that's going to appeal to a whiskey geek, but somebody that really just wants a, a good flavor profile that they can enjoy day to day. Man, I'm, I'm crazy excited but just about doing this. Ton of fun for me. I said in the beginning how much bourbon and barbecue to go together. I know our audience has been telling me that for a long time. So thanks again for being here. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going on this podcast. We're recording next oh, week. Right. So next week. you'll have to definitely check out the podcast and, and, uh, and hear what we got going on there. But like I always say, if you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. Uh, your subscriptions allow us to create more of these videos to bring this sort of stuff to you. And hey, if you like this, obviously let us know about it. We'd love to, uh, you know, drink more bourbon. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to do a part two, maybe three, maybe four. Yeah, you know? maybe ten. I mean, these were these weren't bad. So yeah, let's do let's do eight pairings next time. Cheers, cheers, brother. Thanks again. See y'all next time. Toodles. <laughs>